Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher, and I got two very special guests on the sofa today. Councilwoman Angela Williams, Super Ward 7. How's it going? It's going good. Okay, we're not starting a forum here, so when I, but I got to give you titles. And Councilman Andy Protegero, Ward 1. How's it going? Doing well, thank you. Good having you guys on the sofa. Some have been on the sofa before, others, new time. First time for everything. I know. And, I'm looking, it, and there, there will be a second, I promise, even before we have our, our conversation. How's that? That's fine. Well, I want to talk to you about what could be a very serious topic, and that's called the Mayor's Commission on Poverty Reduction. Mm -hmm. I, I notice it doesn't stop with just the Mayor's Commission on Poverty. So you're not studying it, are you? No, I think that we can't. It would be great if we could eradicate it totally. Mm -hmm. But I think the understanding, and as the Mayor gave us our uh, marching orders, was it was to be realistic. And to be realistic, it would be reduction and not eradication. Mm -hmm. So that's why it has that title. Okay, so it's natural to say, okay, we have poverty in our community, as all communities do. It's not, it's mm -hmm. not unique just to Norfolk. So let's have a commission. What do you see as the purpose of this commission? I think the purpose, the purpose is to examine why we have poverty, what things that we have in our city that contribute to poverty, and look at how we can um, reduce that. How can we move the needle? We have a lot of great assets in the city. We, had a, we have a lot of great programs in the city, um, but we still have a lot of poverty in the city. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're looking at is how do, we, how do we put people together with the assets that we have to help them to reduce the poverty and better their, their, their lifestyle, better, you know, better their income, better their education, so that they can move out of poverty into a better lifestyle. Now, I've looked over the list. I'm not going to ask you who's on the commission because that would be cruel. I've looked over the list, and I've got to tell you, it is a blue-ribbon committee of people that know the topic. Well, I think that the way you would look at it, Bob, it's really a cross-section of, um, of our society as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, you've got people from the school system, people from uh, the employment sector. You have from industry here in Norfolk. You have uh, HRT because HRT moves 50 to 60,000 people a day mm -hmm. uh, that need to go to jobs. So it really is a cross-section of our largest employers, our largest industries, our schools, uh, the Norfolk Police Department, where everyone can get together and discuss the issue of poverty and uh, from their own perspective mm -hmm. in life, but also we all have our historical backgrounds as to where we come from and we all all of us bring that to the commission's table. Now, I know when I, when I introduce you guys, I introduce you from current positions you've got now of leadership. Mm -hmm. um, you're working on a very successful real estate career, mm -hmm. as well as being a counselor and a, and a college student. <laughs> you are a successful lawyer. I don't see poverty on this sofa. Well, I think that, again, if I could, mm -hmm. and then Angela, of course, has her story, but you know, my grandfather arrived here 100 years ago from Sparta, Greece. Uh, he had a push cart. Uh, he sold peanuts in front of the old Norfolk Academy. Wow. And, uh, and then from there, uh, he raised a family on Holt Street. Uh, a lot of people don't know where Holt Street no, is today. No, it's that little connector street. Uh, wow. And uh, ultimately had a, a little candy store on Church Street that remained until across from Attic's Theater now until Virginia Beach Boulevard was expanded. He raised six children, six girls. Um, my mother, you know, worked very hard. She was a, a clerk at the naval base, and her and my father, my father educated himself. He came from Greece in 1956. Uh, we didn't have a lot, and they worked hard to be able to get me educated. Mm -hmm. And that was really their main focus upon arriving here in the early 1900s was educating me. Uh, and so... For my family, the, the path to success uh, has been education, and that was what was heard in the house the entire time. So I can bring that to the table, and I think that many of us do bring that side of how do we get uh, to a successful life and, and to being able to have um, uh, a personal wealth or, or means to be able to contribute back and have the time because that gives us that time to contribute back to society and that's done in my 
family, it was done through education. But yet when you sit at the table on the 10th floor for the informal or up in the dais for counsel, your mom is with you. All the time. <laughs> right? I mean, she's, she's out there telling you what to do. Well, well she I, might be. I don't well, know. Well, I tell her when she has a problem. She lives in Tommy's ward, so I always say you got to call your councilman. Uh, but uh, that being said. And she says, I do. He's my son. <laughs> she, does. she does call Tommy. Uh, she, but that being she's said. She's got him on speed dial, right? Well, Tommy, Tommy called her back the other day. Uh, that being said, though, it, it really, I think that part of it goes back to an Angela understands because of where she comes mm -hmm. from and her family background it's really where we come from mm -hmm. uh, and so that understanding and as a lawyer I've spent my entire adult career in it dealing watching what poverty and uh, hopelessness and what drugs can do to an individual and to society and that's when when the mayor came up with this idea and he put it out, I mm -hmm. said, I'd like to be on that. And I know Angela has her too. story yeah. and hers is, is, is compelling or more. Well, I grew up um, as a preacher's kid, and my father pastored a church over in Berkeley for You're 30 years. You're one of the years. good ones, though. I am. I Have really you am. Have always been a good one? Well, anyway, so my dad, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, you know, he pastored for 30 years, and I've seen the change in Berkeley, the redevelopment, mm -hmm. how, how much it has grown, but I also remember the way that community um, was when I was growing up, and there was a lot of poverty there. We had individuals in our congregation who were calling. They had issues. Um, their children, uh, you know, were maybe not doing what they were supposed to do. They were, you know, out in the street, they were not in school, that kind of thing. And so watching my dad work with people who were in poverty really impacted me. And so again, when the mayor said that he wanted to do this, I went to him immediately and said, you know, I really would like to uh, be a part of it. Because then fast forward to being an, an adult, you look at some of the other things that impact our communities, lack of education, lack of resources, lack of development, lack of jobs, those kinds of things um, impact us now in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. And it takes us to that hopelessness. Exactly. Yeah. And when you have hopelessness, and you see you don't have a tomorrow, where do we end up? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes at the courthouse steps. Right. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, go back to, if I go back to your parents who were struggling making that transition, they, they had hope. So they developed the tenacity to get through poverty, to work through it. Correct. But I think that what we have today is, is that we have to make sure that, we, that the children that are in that position to see a success, that there is mm -hmm. a tomorrow that is allows their success mm -hmm. and to foster that ability, whether it's, as Angela has just enumerated, whether it's education at the secondary level, whether it's trading, whether it's trade education, whether it's connecting the individual in the ninth or 10th grade when most kids are dropping out of school, because mm -hmm. that's what I see when you end up in court, you normally drop out in the ninth or 10th grade. At that point, we catch that child. We do it through a workforce development issue or we have some kind of apprenticeship that will get that person where instead of turning toward crime or drugs or burglaries their person turns toward their trade mm -hmm. and then they see a future in that that's where we can be and i think that's where we come mm -hmm. with that hope mm -hmm. the commission is 33 people who are who are either been touched are touching poverty they can make a difference so why don't you guys just lock yourself up in a room and give us the answer He's smart enough to do that. Yeah. I'm not smart enough to <laughs> okay. do that. Well, well, one of the things you're talking about doing now is going out into the community and, and setting up these meetings mm -hmm. to talk to the community. Mm -hmm. We gave it to you to do, right? Well, you know what, I'll tell you, when we had our first meeting, one of the things that I said to the committee members is this is not a meeting for us to come and lecture you. This is a meeting for everyone to participate, and it's a working meeting because we do have all these great minds around the table, mm -hmm. and we do have people who work in areas that they serve people who are in poverty. So you need to bring us what you know, bring us what you see, bring us what your experiences are, and that's the reason for the town hall meeting. We get the experiences of the community, those who are living in poverty, those who are being affected by poverty, those who know someone who is affected by poverty. Um, what are their experiences? What are their ideas? Because sometimes it's very simple and we may overthink it. Mm -hmm. 
we're capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and wouldn't it be cool, we go from 33 to have several hundred, and I know we're, gonna, we're putting those meetings together as we mm -hmm. speak, so pay attention to the website, and we'll have those dates out there. But to layer those 33 thoughts with maybe a couple of hundred people who could come to the table maybe with some engagement and solutions? Well, I think that, keep in mind, this is a democracy. Uh, we haven't forgotten that. And though it's a representative democracy, it's really one of the people. Mm -hmm. So if, if we don't get the feedback or the understanding of where people are today, not, perhaps not the push cart in front of Norfolk Academy, perhaps not the, the person who clerked uh, at the naval base, but if we get more than that, uh, or the self-made person that's motivated. There are other stories out there. Mm -hmm. There's other paths to beating this. And so that's what I think that we all need because there's maybe 30 or 33 in the room, but there's thousands of ideas that can, that can help solve or at least reduce, as we said at the beginning, what we're doing and reduce poverty. So it really takes all of us. That's right. Well, thank you for stepping up to the plate. Yeah, and doing this, welcome. and um, I'm going to have you back on the sofa to kind of do an update. Okay. I told you, you get, you get another spot <laughs> about it. Say hi to your mom. Thank you, I will. And what was Tommy's cell number? <laughs> we won't put that out just yet. <laughs> Thanks. I think it's on the website. <laughs> there we go. It's on the website. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank for being you. Here. Thanks for joining us.